Did you know there was such thing as a blank character? And that that blank character is super handy in Tableau? I'll show you some cool use cases coming up next. If you've seen any of my presentations in the past year or two, you probably heard me talk about transparent shapes. But did you know there was a transparent character as well? Called a blank character. You can get to it by just searching for U2800. It's a Unicode character. And there's lots of cool use cases for a blank character. Now it's not a space, it's a blank character. So we're gonna check out some of these cool use cases right now. Number one, buttons. All right, the first one up is a Lindsay Betzendahl technique. It's all about buttons. That's been pretty common recently for people to build backgrounds and other tools like Figma or PowerPoint, um, makes some things easier. You can see this is just one big image. And what I want to do is use this image to uh, create buttons. I want these little things to be navigation buttons going to another dashboard. I could, you know, create these and then chop them out and make them individual buttons, or I can just kind of overlay a transparent button on top of that. You might have might seen me do this before, but I'm just going to drag out a navigation button. I'm going to have it cover that spot. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to tell it to go to the, I don't know, this dashboard here. I'm going to change it to an image. I'll choose this transparent shape. Again, you can check out transparent shapes on our website. Just search for Furlage Twins Transparent Shapes and you'll see this exact use case. I'll hit OK and then hit OK again. And then if I click this, it'll go to this other dashboard, right? That's really, really nice. The problem is when I publish this and somebody goes to click that button, it looks like this. It's a really weird uh, user interface, a really not user interface, but really u weird user experience. And I don't like that. I'd love to be able to correct it. So what we can do is use a blank character to correct that. And again, learn this from Lit Lindsay. Um, we can come up here and edit and you'll see I got that tr image button. It's a transparent shape. I'm going to change this to a text button instead. I'm going to change the background to be none. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to copy this Unicode character that I mentioned before. All right. And we're going to put that in the title. I'm just going to paste it. It's a blank. You don't see anything. It looks like a space, but it's not a space. It's a blank. I'll hit OK. This still works like a navigation button like before, right? But when I go to publish this and a user goes to use it, they get this experience. So this versus this, in my opinion, leaps and bounds better user uh, experience. Number two, labels. All right, we got this nicely designed line chart and then we go to add the labels and when we do, they overlap the marks. And so we wanna try and fix that, right? And uh, we notice that it's the problem is on the right hand side. So we go to the label and we think maybe we'll just add some spaces out to the right. We'll just hit the space bar a couple times. I'll do a bunch to make it obvious and we hit okay and absolutely nothing happened. That thing didn't shift at all. Well, maybe we add some spaces, I don't know, on the, on the left-hand side, hit okay. Again, nothing has moved. We can fix that with this blank character. Again, I'm gonna come over here and copy this guy, go back to my dashboard, and then I'm gonna jump over to the second one, and same chart, we're gonna go in here, and instead of spaces, I'm gonna put a couple of blank characters. I'm gonna put two of them. Now, something you're gonna notice when I hit okay, is we get this weird line. I'm not sure why that happens, but we can fix it really quickly. Uh, let's see, that is size 11. We're gonna make everything 11 and then hit okay. That should disappear. And now you can see that this is spaced off of that mark. Here, they did it with the spaces. Here, with the Unicode blank character, they're off that, uh, off that mark. So. Great use case for Unicode blank characters is spacing in your labels. Number three, reference lines. A similar use case to the line labels that we just talked about is labels on a reference line. Lots of times I've got reference lines in tight areas. This is probably a terrible example, but got reference lines in tight areas where I've got um, just a lot going on and I wanna be able to control where these where these labels uh, reside. 
So let's say we want to bring this off of this uh, right hand side. We want to bring it to the left a little bit. We might edit this and like before, add a bunch of spaces to the right hand side. Hit OK. That thing doesn't move at all. You can pretty much guess where we're going with this. We'll get rid of this. We'll just replace it with a couple of Unicode characters. And you can see that's jumped off and given us the, the space here or the padding that we need. You can do that on the left, you can do it on the right. Uh, just gives you a lot more flexibility to put that thing where you want it. Number four, headers. All right, this one might seem a bit unique, but it's something I've run into a number of times. So let's resolve it. So. I've got this bar chart. This is looking at census data, looking at men versus women and across different age groups. And I really don't like the look of this because they just run together. You've probably seen this trick before, um, but we can add spacing to this and we can do it by adding a subtotal. So I'm going to go to totals, add subtotal. It's going to add a subtotal. I can click on this and then choose hide. Then I can right click on this and this label here, I can just delete it. So now what I've got is this nice padding, the spacing between the bars makes it a whole heck of a lot easier to read than, uh, than before. The problem I got, it's driving me crazy because uh, I'm a bit particular, is that these labels don't line up with these two bars anymore. They line up with these three bars. You can kind of see that when I hover over it or click on it, it's, it's centered above these three bars, not the two. So we can use that same methodology we used before instead of spaces, We'll use this Unicode blank. So what I've done is got and created this calculation. Just kind of show you what's happened right now. It's just equal to group. That's just these different groups. We might say add um, some spaces. I'm just hitting the space bar. We'll hit OK here and we'll see just like before that does absolutely nothing. Again, we can come in here, replace those spaces with Unicode blanks and we'll use a couple of them here. Uh, close up that quote and we'll see this thing shift now that's pretty close maybe we could add one more in there hit okay and now instead of centering above these three we've centered above the two that we're showing so really nice to get some uh, nice polish on on your business if you're using that technique and number five tables all right, the last thing we're going to talk about is tables. So I'm going to look at a couple of different use cases for tables. Um, this particular table is looking at world indicators data, just a bunch of metrics. Uh, we've got our, uh, our headers center aligned, and then these are all numbers, so naturally they're right aligned. The problem we have with this is that my right aligned numbers don't really sync up, don't align very well with my centered headers. We could right align these headers, but that looks really bad if you ask me i'm going to do that and just show you i think that looks sloppy so i'd rather have my uh my headers centered so let's see if we can do something about those numbers in excel we might use the indent we'll just indent from the right a couple a uh, couple and it would shift this over so let's try and replicate an indent in excel in tableau just say we add some spaces out to the right we would think we hit okay and then it'll shift over doesn't happen same exact thing like we've done before. I'm just going to replace those with some Unicode blanks. I'm going to use two of them, hit OK. And we get that weird space thing. Let's just go back in here, we'll resize everything, make sure it looks good, hit OK, and that should clean up. Now we've got this pretty close. It still isn't exactly where I want. I'm going to copy that one, just paste maybe one more. And maybe just one more. And now we have these numbers that are still right aligned. But now they're centered up with the headers a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And another use case we're going to talk about for tables, and I've actually done this a bunch of times, is um, talking about right aligned numbers that are matching up with uh, left aligned text. So in this case, I'm looking at countries and we're looking at the birth rate and the population total. I've got this sorted by population and then we're ranking on population. What I really don't I really don't want this to be the third column, so I'm just going to move it over to the left and we're going to show the rank. And we've got these numbers that, in my opinion, are far too close to these um, to these, these countries. So I really want to provide some space. So I could try and stretch this. And you know what happens is these right aligned numbers, they just are always along that margin. I'd sure like to be able to, to provide some spacing in between that. 
So what we might consider doing, and I think I've already done, no, I haven't. Um, so we might want to create a spacer. Um, we'll just call this spacer. And I will just put in some spaces. I just use the space bar there and hit OK and whoop, spacer. And then we'll put that up here next to rank and that'll create some space, right? That's really nice. Problem is I got this word spacer up here. I don't really want that. Let's show that. So uh, how do I get rid of that? Well, I might be able to edit this name. What if we just made the name of this thing a space? I just hit the space bar. If we just hit space and then that label would just show the space and we'd be good. So, but you see what happened, an empty name is not allowed. Well, it's a space. It's not allowed. Well, you can see my resolution of this. I'm just going to paste in a Unicode blank character. You see that is now allowed. Uh, it doesn't recognize that as an empty, um, empty name. We'll hit okay. And you'll see our spacer has no name and it's just a space and allows us to give, uh, give a little space between those right line numbers and the left line text. All right, there you have it. Some really cool use cases for the blank Unicode character. For more Tableau related content, check us out at FleurledgeTwins.com. Thanks.